YouTube, uh, this is Mr. White. I've been getting a lot of questions about um, how to balance engines, basically. So I finally decided to kick out another video um, about this. So basically, in this tutorial, and this is not pertaining to real life whatsoever, I'm going to be talking about two types of um, imbalances that can occur in your engine. Um, and I'm just going to name them, not relating to anything in real life, uh, primary and secondary. Um, imbalances. So, uh, a great way to demonstrate this is the, the wonderful little inline force that I have here. Um, I've color coded the pistons. Um, in this example, which is the probably the most common in Gary's mod that I've seen, um, you have four pistons, each with a different um, point on the crankshaft that they're uh, a different plane on the on the crankshaft that. Um, they're connected to, so you get four different distinct um, timings in the engine. And this is, I'm not even going to say it's alright, this is bad. Don't do this. Because unless you want uh, four other thrusters, um, which is what you need to balance it out, and I'll talk, that, talk about that later, um, this is not good. You're going to get, um, you won't get up and down movement like other engines will. But you'll get uh, sort of a rocking movement uh, where the, the front of the engine will pick up and the bottom of the engine will pitch down and it'll change back and forth um, every revolution. It's just not, it'll cause a lot of vibrations and you won't be pleased with it. Um, now this over here um, is sort of like a, a two-cylinder engine really, just with two extra pistons. Um, each piston shares a, a common plane on the crankshaft, so you only have two uh, two different timings here. And what's nice about this is um, I've color coded them. The reds have the same timing and the blues have the same timing. What's nice about this is on the left side of the engine and on the right side of the engine you have perfectly balanced equal forces, so you're not going to have any rocking uh, motion like you would with the uh, inline four over there. Um, so this, I completely endorse this. This is a good design for an engine. I am, I use this for uh, V8s, inline 8s, and inline 4s. I mean, this is, well, I guess I don't use it for inline 8s, but no, this is a good, good design for an inline 4 if you're going to use one. Um, and the only reason that this is balanced is because you do have, um, basically you have opposite pistons, or for any piston that you have on one side of the engine, you have mirrored it on the other side of the engine, so that you get, well, perfect balance. Um, and that's a good rule for any time that you build an engine, is that you you mirror the uh, pistons on either side of the engine, so that it's nice and balanced. And that is what I'm going to call primary balance. So, I mean, yeah, fun. The other kind of balance, that I'm going to be talking about over here is a secondary balance. Now, like primary balance, primary balance doesn't always apply. Um, it's always good to maintain this rule of what I'm going to call primary balance, but sometimes that's, that's not quite enough. What I'm going to talk about is secondary balance. Now, in this inline six that I have, I've used this plenty of times. Um, the pistons are mirrored across, you know, the middle of the engine, like I showed over there. But this engine is still going to be imbalanced, and that is because the forces um, throughout the uh, rotation of the engine are not equal. And basically, the secondary balance I'm going to talk about is um, you need, for every one piston on any side of the engine that is moving in one direction, you should always have a piston moving in the opposite direction. And this is to cancel out the um, the forces going up and down instead of just the forces on either side of the engine imbalancing. So with an engine like this, either you can completely avoid building an engine like this, which, you know, feel free to. Or you can very simply add a thruster. And let's see, I'll just go into the expression to show you how that works. So this is my expression for um, that inline six over there. And basically, I have one more output besides the the six cylinders. Um, I have a balanced thruster output, which is labeled right here. And I define that down here as 
T1 plus T2 plus T3, which basically is the, the, uh, gosh, how should I word it? The sum of the outputs of all the thrusters, be it positive or negative. So basically what that is doing is, um, taking whatever net force you have up or down from the engine, and I don't expect half of you to understand this, the net force is up or down, and changing that, making that opposite, and applying that to the engine to try and balance it out. And if you just do that by itself, it can work sometimes. Um, but for this engine, I've found that I actually have to multiply it by about 2 to get it to work properly. And I think that might be because of the piston masses um, moving and imbalancing the engine. But I'm not really sure. Anyway, enough of that. So that is um, my inline 6. Now, to, if you want to completely ignore that, I have an inline 8 here, and I know this thing is just crazy massive. Um, but this is nice because, I mean, it is like the inline 4 is. It has primary balance where the pistons are mirrored. But it also, on either side of the engine, has a piston moving um, in an opposite movement. For every up and down movement, it has a down and up movement. And in this case, the, the blues are mirrored and then offset by the reds. And the same with the yellows and the greens. So if the red is moving up, the blue is moving down at the same, same rate of speed, well, almost. Um, and this creates a perfect perfect balance. There is no up or down movement, there is no rocking at all. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it as far as uh, engine balance. If you just follow those two basic uh, concepts that I just outlined, you should be able to build a nice balanced engine that doesn't uh, doesn't have well, too many vibrations. You're still going to have vibrations just because of the uh, piston masses, unless your pistons weigh absolutely nothing which can cause instability, so I wouldn't wouldn't suggest doing that, but um, as long as you follow these rules, you will have much better success with engines than if you were not to. Um, so yeah, this has been uh, Mr. White.